so I'm back for another Halloween tutorial and today is a zombie one. I was inspired by this picture, um, let me show it to you guys, well I'll insert it somewhere here. Um, it was created by Cal Calandra Studio and um, the picture was off Instagram but I'll link their Instagram in the info box but the picture was like so good. Um, obviously it's not exactly the same but I just... I was just inspired by it. Um, but yeah, that's where my inspiration was from. And another reason is because Walking Dead is coming up soon and I am so, like, excited to see who got hit. I just want to know because it's been killing me this past year. So I hope you guys will enjoy this tutorial and we'll jump straight into it. So to start off this look, I already have my contacts in. These are the Mesmerize in Manson and I'll link them um, in the info box. And then I poured some liquid latex by Cryolan on a piece of plate and let it dry overnight and it became this round piece. And I actually cut it up and just placed this around my eyes to create kind of like saggy eyes. And I did again use the Cryolan liquid latex to stick them on. And yeah, I'm just kind of doing this randomly around my eye area, but um, that's a good tip if you want to kind of make a prosthetic or anything. You can just pour liquid latex on a plate and let it dry overnight and you have some like pieces. I am laying down my brows. I'm using some Pritt stick and just combing them out and it just lays them flat and just setting that with some white eyeshadow. I am also setting all the other latex pieces with um, eyeshadow as well. Then you're going to need some toilet paper and I'm just randomly ripping this up and dipping them in latex and um, applying this around my mouth area and I kind of used an eyebrow pencil just to line where I want the tissue paper to stop because that's where the teeth and the open mouth will be um, and I'm just laying latex around these areas and you want to be quite generous with the latex and blend it, blend it out towards the skin so it doesn't look like you've just glued something on your face and you want to apply around like two layers or so and a lot of liquid latex. In the picture, the nostrils and the nose were quite exposed and quite open, so I'm covering my nose with some tissue paper and letting it kind of hang off my nose and then applying a lot of liquid latex on top of that. I also applied some latex around the uh, latex pieces that we glued around the eyes and put some tissue paper on there as well. You really don't need to be neat with this because like zombie skin so rotten and fleshy and it's just really not neat anyway, so you can be as messy as you'd like. Just make sure that... Um, that you're blending the latex out into the skin so that it blends and it's just not a clump of skin on your face. I'm also doing the forehead piece and this is going to be the cut on the forehead and I also did uh, one for like the collarbone as well. We are going to be ripping this apart later so you want to apply two or three layers and let it dry. I'm going to be drying it off with a hairdryer just to speed up the process. Now this is the part where I'm going to start ripping the latex and it's quite hard now so you just want to rip, well take off, peel off the insides of the latex around the mouth area and you don't want to pull it all the way through, you just want to pull it just a t tinsy bit so that you can kind of rip it and make it look like peeled off dead skin. You want to be really random with this because this is what's going to make it look more realistic and for that um, teared up piece in the middle I just... Um, made a strand of tissue paper and glued it up and then just peeled it off the skin uh, and I'm doing the uh, um, forehead bit as well but I started ripping from the center and I'm doing the same thing for the chest um, cut as well now I'm just grabbing some Snazaroo brown face paint and just applying this all over the white areas so that when I put the foundation on top it's not going to change the color of it it's just going to make it look all even the foundation that I'm using is the EX1 Cosmetics Invisiwear Liquid Foundation in the shade 8 and I'm just dabbing this everywhere on my neck, on my shoulders, on my face and on my brows as well. The only areas that I'm avoiding is the in inside parts of the cuts and around the mouth, the forehead and the chest cut as well because we are going to be painting that red, black and brown colours later on so you want to keep that bit bare. And like I said, I'm just bringing it down my neck and my chest and arms as well. And I just set that all in place with the Rimmel Stay Matte Powder in Transparent. I'm using this Cryolon Aquacolor face paint in grey and I'm stippling this 
all over my skin just to create a zombie kind of skin color you want to be quite random with this again and just apply a little pressure because you don't want it to be too harsh I'm doing this everywhere with these paints you just need to activate it with water and they're really easy to use and they're like £3.25 I believe for one colour so they're really really cheap in my opinion and then I'm also using the khaki green as well in the Kryolan aqua colour paint I did also go back with the Snazaroo dark brown face paint in some areas just to darken those areas up as well and I'm using the Meron clown white face paint and highlighting some areas according to the picture I was just looking back and forth from the picture and just um, highlighting the areas that were highlighted in the picture so for example the wrinkles that I created around the eyes to create the sagginess I just highlighted the highest points of those so the highest points of the um, pieces of latex that we stuck around the eyes and then I'm going in with some black to create some shadowing and I'm using the Snazaroo black face paint and I'm using this around the eyes but not completely just in just very lightly because I wanted to add some red face paint as well but I'm just um, contouring the eye area and also just shading the wrinkles around the eyes as well now this is the aqua color face paint by Coralie and I'm just applying this um, on the lower lash line and also in the cuts. Now going back in with the black, I'm continuing filling up the eye area and I'm also shading the inside parts of the skin around the cuts. So underneath the tear up latex that we created and now I'm doing the nose. I really copied out the picture right here. I, I tried to, it was quite hard but all you have to do is just keep looking back and forth and from like an inspo pic and you'll be able to do kind of like a nose um, it's more of like a skeleton nose I would say so if you can do skeleton nose I think that will be even that will be okay um, I was trying to add some shading around it to make it more look more realistic and I also tried to do the nostril parts as well which was just colouring like you could all, you could just do like two black triangles if you, you are having trouble with it um, but it's just like two triangles I really created just on the bottom bit and I'm just also creating like some shading around the forehead as well according to the picture as well because the nose was kind of cracked that's why I added a bit of white in the centre as well So this is where I start to kind of create the sagginess around the eyes so I'm shading quite close to the wrinkles and then highlighting the highest points of them. I also did use the noir eyeshadow from the Anastasia Shadow Couture palette or you can use any black eyeshadow just to deepen the eye socket so I'm really applying a lot around the outside and then just fading it out towards the towards my eyeballs really and I also did use fudge from the palette which is a dark brown just to fill in the rest of the eye socket I did also go back in with Meron clown white just to highlight the brow area so that this will give an illusion that the eye sockets are even really deep And again I'm just going back with some white just to highlight the under eyes a bit so it creates a lot of sagginess and texture. But with this, with the shading and lighting you really want to play around with it and if you are having trouble with it just practice a few times. Um, but you just have to kind of shade uh, where you, wherever you see lines and then highlight the highest points of those lines so it creates more dimension. So for the teeth I'm actually cutting up some white false nails and I'm colouring the inside bit of the mouth first so I'm using the brown paint uh, from Snazaroo first and just filling that area up. I also grabbed some black just to shade the inner bits of under the skin so wherever we tear the latex you just want to shade that part just to make it look really deep and make it look like it has been teared off the face. 
And the part where uh, the farthest part from the mouth, so around my ear area, I just painted that mostly black and red, and that will just be like hollowness. And then I'm just painting the center black, and I did use some uh, spirit gum just to glue those nails in place. To give some rotten colour to the teeth, I'm using this tooth enamel in the shade nicotine and just colouring their lips in and fading them out with my using my finger. You could also use like a an old brush or something. And then I'm just going in with some red paint from the Cryolin Aquacolor um, paints and just shading around the teeth and um, around my lip area because we're going to make it look like as if it was gum. I just highlighted the red paint with some white paint and then shaded it with some black in between just to give an illusion that it was like just gum really. And then the final step really was just a lot of uh, scab blood, I think that's what it's called. And this is the Ben Nye scab blood I think and oh no it's not scab blood it's fresh scab by Ben Nye and I'm just using this a lot around the teeth, the cuts. Um, also on the perimeter of the ripped skin, um, underneath the skin and I did apply a lot on the chest cut as well. You could also use uh, fake blood but I feel like a fresh scab is better because it's more of a gel consistency so it stays in place and it doesn't leak everywhere and it's less messy. The only thing is it's a bit sticky but I don't really mind that. I prefer that than to, for it to leak everywhere. I think it's more of like a zombie kind of blood, I guess. But that's the end of this tutorial. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with all your friends. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.